This is the day that so many of you at home have been waiting for training camp. Finally yeah. here, day one. So now that it's in the books, I guess Joe, Bill's beat reporter, you know who he is. <laughs> Joe, what, what stood out to you today? Well, I think the first thing that really stood out was Stefan Gilmore. I mean, the cornerback was just absolutely on fire today. I mean, of course, we have to temper the uh, enthusiasm a little bit just because the, uh, the day wasn't exactly very physical, but Gilmore made a stamp uh, on, on the day, making it his by, you know, intercepting Tyrod Taylor and really just staying in the hip pocket of all of the uh, all of the wide receivers except for a couple of slant routes thrown his way. I mean, he was just a dominant player today, and he really stole the show um, in terms of all the players out on the field. Okay, so the guy that you just mentioned, you said don't get too high on anybody right. after one day, don't get too low about anybody on one day, but Tyrod didn't look too great today. Well, Tyrod had a so-so day, and, you know, I think it's because we – grew accustomed to a certain level based on the spring workouts and today which was essentially very similar to the spring workouts he really didn't show as well as he did during june in minicamp and even in may in the otas so uh, you know i wanted to see a little bit more from him he was he was missing some targets i don't know if it was rust if it was not being comfortable with some of the receivers that weren't available to practice during that minicamp session so uh, whatever the reason was taylor just uh, he, he didn't perform as well as you know we we saw from him in the spring since minicamp since minicamp has ended so many people have asked yourself they've asked me mm -hmm. hey des lewis right. this guy looks like he's gonna be good he looks pretty good today you know one day but what yeah, are you sure. expecting from him in this training camp well he's definitely a viable candidate for that number three job there's no doubt in my mind because i mean you look at the way the NFL is kind of going. New Orleans did it a while ago with Marcus Colston being a six foot four guy in the slot. You saw Philadelphia do it with uh, Jordan Matthews um, in the slot. Chip, that's who Chip Kelly entrusted with that role. So it's not totally out of the question for a number three receiver, a slot receiver, to be that tall. And that's what Des Lewis is. So he's going to be firmly in the competition along with Greg Salas and uh, Leonard Hankerson. I think. I think you should keep an eye on, you know, even Marquise Goodwin, who I thought had a really nice day today in his first day back from the Olympic trials, and uh, even Colby Listenby, too. There's going to be a lot of guys, Greg Little, Jared Boykin, I could go on and on. There's yeah. a lot of guys vying for it. So many, and it seems kind of crowded back there. But I guess another question that a lot of people have had for us today is Carlos Williams. Carlos mm -hmm. Williams did not practice today. We saw him on the stationary bike right. right next to Sammy Watkins. They were doing the speed ladder, just some basic kind of, you know, non-practice drills. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting from him? Well, I think with Carlos, the big thing is get to that weight, start to condition, get yourself where you're in a little bit more football shape. That's the biggest thing for him because he needs to uh, really take advantage of the opportunity because you heard it as well as I did from Rex Ryan today. I asked Rex Ryan point blank, does he have a hold on the backup job when he comes back from suspension in week five? And it wasn't the biggest ringing endorsement. You know, he referenced Lou Gehrig coming up and uh, and stealing stealing the show when he was able to do it. Um, but you know, Carlos Williams has to be really careful that he doesn't lose the grip on this thing because Mike Gillisley, I'll tell you what, in complimentary duty last year, he performed pretty well. He had over 10 yards of carry. So yeah, it was five, it, five games, 300 it, yards. Yeah, I mean, touchdowns. I mean, Mike Gillisley performed well, and he's got a major opportunity to really take hold of that backup job because Reggie Bush isn't signed at this point. Yeah, and final thing we'll talk about right sure. now. So for those of you at home who don't know, when we go and we do these interviews, when we get sound with players, we call that a sound bite. Joe asked one of the players today, what's it like to play for Rex and Rob Bryan? <laughs> Best sound bite of the day was? Um, Just that, beep. That bleeps funny, man, <laughs> from Randall Johnson, who, <laughs> you know, Randall Johnson, who's a backup middle linebacker, he's a... Uh, He's kind of a tree. He's trying to make the roster as kind of a hybrid inside-outside linebacker. But those two guys, and I even asked Preston Brown later on, I said, do you kind of have to, like, if you're, if you're not turned towards Rex and Rob and you hear one of them say something to you, do you have to go in your mind, okay, which one is that? Because their voice is identical. Oh, my goodness, it's insane. <laughs> so, uh, so he's like, yeah, sometimes I do, but Rex really doesn't talk to me unless I do something wrong. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a good thing. Yeah. All right, so. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. We appreciate it. Bill's back out on the field again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Joe and I are going to be here for the next month. Our dorm is just about 100 yards <laughs> to the right. So if you have any questions, feel free to send us tweets on our Twitter page. We do Facebook Lives very often. You can check that out right there. And, of course, there's going to be content new for you every single day on WKBW.com. Have a great night.